Hello friends, welcome to my channel. So this is the second part of the series how to make a website using Python. So I hope you already watched the first video and if not, so please go and watch the first video and then come back to the second video. You can find the link in the description box or you can go to my channel and search for the first part of this video. In the previous part, we have learned about how website work, how Python plays the role in, in, in building the website and also different Python frameworks and how these frameworks are helpful in making the website and we install those framework on the PyCharm. And in this video, we will be learning how HTML, CSS, JavaScript are sent to the browser using Python. And uh, also we will get a glimpse of the website that we will be building. It's a very impressive website. Uh, so also one more thing is there is some issue with the voice in the middle part of the video. So apologies for this. There was some issue in the mic. So let's get started. So far in the previous video, uh, we have created our project first website and then we have created a Python file uh, web server and we are importing the library Flask and using this Flask library, I'm able to create the app route to the root directory. Uh, and then uh, once we hit the root directory, uh, it's showing this message. And also we are running our web server on this specific local host URL. So it's 127.0.100 and also we are running this in the development mode so we can make a real time changes and then it will reflect that on our uh, local host website real time. So let's go back to our website. So here you can see the website is also running. It's on the same port, same IP address. And then when I refresh this, uh, so it's it's coming status as zero. So that means the web server is responding with the OK message. And also this is the document that is coming as a response. So, so far, uh, this is what we have achieved. So in this video, so let's start with creating our HTML page. So what I'm doing here is I'll create, go to the project, right click new and then HTML file. So let's say I'll give this file as index dot HTML. Okay, awesome. So uh, this is the best part with PyCharm. It auto creates the whole structure of the HTML file. It starts with the HTML tag and the head, meta title, body. So let's give this as a, yeah, I'll have as a title. And then in the body, I can define as welcome to AI lab website. Okay, so now I have created the HTML file. So in order to send this file using Flask, what we have to do is we have to import the render template class from the Flask library. So if we have to go back to my Python file, and then here I have to import render template. And then in order to pass this render template, so what I have to do is instead of returning this, I have to just remove this and return the render template. And I have to give the file name here. So it's index.html so what is happening here is so let me save this first so what is happening here is i'm telling the class that okay render this template and the template name is index.html so it will go go and look for that index.html template and then render this so as it is running in debug mode so it should be real time so let's go to the website and check that so let me refresh this so it seems it's not able to find this index dot template. So maybe there is an issue probably over here. 
So I deliberately did that. The reason behind is I want to I want you to learn like if you run into real time issue, how to resolve that. So the so let's go to the documentation and check what went wrong here. So if I go to documentation and as I'm talking about the template, so I can just go to rendering template. And in the rendering template, it mentioned that, uh, so it we follow the same format, but it says that Flask will look for templates in the template folder. So as our index file is not in the template folder, that's why it's not able to render it. So let's create a template folder and move our file in that template folder. So let's go and create a new directory and I will name this as templates. Okay, and then I will move this index HTML template to this and then uh, Okay, so now the template is moved over here and uh, let's go back to our File as well and then let's see how this should work. Let me save this now. Okay, now let's refresh our website Awesome so now you can see that now it's able to render it the HTML file and if I click on this the whole response is coming as an HTML file with the title um, as you can see the title and also the body of the website. Okay so now let's add a CSS to this so in order to add the CSS so let's first go to the documentation that how the CSS should be added and we are using a flask. So we can go to the documentation and look for as CSS and JavaScript is considered as a static file. So we can go into the static file and we can check and it says just create a folder called static in your package and then it will be available as this in the application. So let's go to the folder. Let's go to the project folder and add this. Okay, so now what we have to do is let's go and create a new directory called static okay so in that we will be creating our CSS file so I'll just go and say style.css okay perfect and then uh, we'll just change the background color as light blue and save this so now uh, like when we send the HTML when we send the files to the to the browser so the browser only reads the HTML file so so it cannot reach to the CSS file so it just reads the HTML file and from there it finds okay we there is a CSS also defined and there is a JavaScript also defined so we need to define the CSS file in the HTML so let's go to our HTML file in the template and here we have to define that as a link in the head so we can say link and then uh, hf and then here we have to define static style dot css Okay, and then there are two more attributes we have to define. So, uh, well, should be style sheet. Okay, and then we have to define here the type. So, type should be text.css. Okay, looks good. Let's move this a little bit. Okay, so now. Uh, the similar way we can define a JavaScript as well. So let's create a JavaScript file also. So you can say here file and then I can name this as script.js. So in this JavaScript file, we'll just add console.log and uh, let's say in a, in a lab. Okay. So now we need to add that in index also. So that can be that should be defined in the body. So we just say script and uh, and in the script we define SRC. 
and here uh, the same static and then slash script dot js okay so everything looks good let's save this and let's go to our uh, website let's go to our website to see everything is working fine and uh, the real time changes are also saved okay so i'm at the website let me refresh this seems to be there is an issue with the style.css okay let's see what we missed here we can go to the documentation and check so it says static.style.css so it seems like we have missed something so let's go back to our file again okay so let's see we we'll remove this from here and remove this also from here and save it okay seems like uh, the problem was with some this extra bracket okay so let's save it and go back again so let me refresh this awesome so now you can see that uh, uh, the server is responding with style.css and also with the javascript and then if we go to the javascript here uh, so it's returning the console log so what we have if you go to the console so this is also so it's returning and style.css both so this is the way we can pass the javascript html and also the css file back to the browser and the browser reads the html file and render that, render that on the page so sometimes you want to make things dynamic so for an example uh, so let's say if i want to write here this is my ai lab website number one and then two and three but it should change dynamically so uh, the the flask gives you uh, a very easy way to do that so it can be easily done by having a uh, curly braces so let's say for an example i say website number it's, it's just a example you can do a lot of fancy stuff with this so let's say if i put it here two plus five and then if i just save it and then let me go to my website so let me refresh the website so you can see it's pretty simple uh, you just define that in the curly braces so uh, so underneath what is happening here is if i go to the documentation so uh, flask is using the jinja templating language uh, so it's it's inbuilt in in the flask and uh, this gives you an extra power to dynamically update the page another important thing that i want you to uh, explain is called variable rule so basically what is happening here is when we want to read something from the from the url so for an example some variables are being passed in the url and you want to read that in your python so uh, the flask gives you an easy way to do that so that is defined in the variable rule so if i go here so you can see here the variable rules are being defined and then uh, it, it's a very easy way what you have to do is you can just define that using these uh, these signs and also if it is a string integer float so you have a different way to define if it is an integer integer colon path colon so that way you can define so let's uh, do a username here so if i go back to my project okay so i am on the project so let me copy this and make something dynamic that we can read it from the url so we just have to give username so here we can pass this as a parameter username now in order to pass it to the html template we just have to give there as a parameter so now the username will be stored in this name and i can use that in my html so let me go to my html here okay and then let's remove this for now and here i can define welcome and uh, let's say name 
and let's just save it and now I'm going back to the website here and let's refresh the website okay seems like both the functions have the same name so we have to go and fix that so uh, let's say if I make it as home page and then save this now let's refresh this okay so I think we have to define that in double curly braces we missed this okay now save it let's go back to the website refresh this this is looking good now let's say if I add here as name around awesome so let's change it to my name Vinay welcome Vinay. so this is pretty dynamic you can just read it from the URL and uh, up in the your Python uh, file and then pass it to the template so that you can make things dynamic on the website so as this video was becoming a little longer and I don't want to make a very long video uh, and put everything in that video so I split this video into another part so that would be the final part of this video and uh, trust me in that video you will start making the website so these two pre these two videos first and second was more about understanding the different concept and the final video will be actually when we will be making the website and we will make that in actually five minutes or maybe less than five minutes so let me show you a little glimpse of that website that we'll be building in the next video so this is the website that we will be building in our next and final video and it's it's about kindergarten education website and uh, you can see it's pretty impressive website that's lots of different components are tied together so whatever we have learned in first and second video we will all club together in this website and uh, also it has different components that we like about classes teachers and so lots of things are there and trust me we'll make this website in less than five minutes as I promised so stay tuned for the third video and also please 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 subscribe to this channel because if you subscribe I get a indication that you like this video and you want more of these types of video so i'll keep making these videos and thanks for watching